Now I would like to uh, share with you two, uh, two e experiments we did um, with the uh, union of cheese producers in uh, Normandy, in France, and uh, with the University of, uh, of Caen. First, um, we all know that there is substantial microbial diversity in uh, raw milk. In a recent review of Montelial, um, more than 100 microbial genera and more than 400 microbial species have been um, recorded in raw milk, including more than 90 uh, gram-negative bacterial species, more than 90 gram-positive, catalase-positive bacterial species, more than 70 uh, yeast species, but also lactic acid bacteria, about 60 different species, and filamentous fungi. We also know that part of microbial diversity brought by raw milk expresses its, itself during cheese making. Thank you, Ron. Uh, we know that at least some native microorganisms um, originating from raw milk grow in it and then in curd and in cheese during cheese making and ripening. And also, probably, some of these native microorganisms from raw milk establish themselves in the cheese-making environment, um, being able, uh, after, to inoculate cheese. We also know that flavor, cheese flavor, is more intense and rich in raw milk cheeses than in processed ones. And we know that native microorganisms from raw milk can uh, exhibit interesting activities, including antipathogenic activities uh, that, is, that has been uh, described to be higher in traditional cheeses than in processed ones. The last point for this introduction is that we know that probably microbial diversity is decreasing in raw milk, both at, uh, quantitative, uh, at, the, quantita at the quantitative level, but also maybe uh, at a qualitative level. In industrial, in industrialized, sorry, <laughs> European countries, um, we, I believe that microbial counts uh, have decreased, have been reduced by two to three logs uh, during the last 30 years, uh, during the 80s, uh, at the beginning of the 80s in France, raw milk, at currently, um, at usually counts um, as high as one million cells per milliliter, and now we have less than uh, ten uh, thousand, and sometimes less than one thousand cells per milliliter. You have here an example of um, micro microbial data. Um, registered in raw milk in Normandy during two different periods in uh, 1992, uh, the data in dark color, and more recently in pale color. You have different microbial groups, and we can see that for some of them, some lactic acid bacteria, including lactobacillus, uh, antero, uh, lactobacillus, sorry, for yeast, for pseudomonas, um, although there is a wide variation between samples, the mean level didn't change. But regarding the one special uh, genus of lactic acid bacteria, the genus Lactococcus, using the same culture media in, uh, in few years, the level was reduced by one log. From a, 
qualitative point of view, we also observed, at least in Normandy, but also generally in uh, European countries, that some um, microbiological traits, some phenotypes, disappeared. A good, a good example, in my opinion, is uh, the, the lactic acid bacteria, Lactococcus lactis subspecies cremoris, which can be formed uh, using, uh, using DNA-based uh, analysis. So the, the, genomic that, the genomic species is present in raw milk, but is, uh, its traits change and we can no longer can no longer find this uh, phenotype in raw milk uh, suggesting that this bacteria changed because uh, cheese traditional cheese producers in Normandy complain of insufficient flavor in, in at least some of their cheeses um, we collaborated to develop two regional projects in order to enhance and better harness microbial diversity. And I'm going to show you these two examples. The first way we, we chose to work um, aimed at harnessing microbial diversity by preserving it in situ in raw milk. And I'm going to make a link with the uh, talk of Marie-Christine. Uh, our aim was to uh, analyze, to, to test the effect of uh, practices of dairy farmers on quantitative microbial diversity in raw milk. To, to do this, uh, 130 farms were selected in the Normandy area. Uh, these farms, um, the, the milk from this farm is collected to make uh, Camembert de Normandie cheese. So the, in each farm, uh, two, sam two uh, samples were obtained. The first milk sample was obtained when cows were uh, housed indoors, and the second one when cows were uh, grazing in pasture lands. During this project, uh, a survey uh, on farm was done via personal interviews of dairy farmers in order to record their main uh, management practices regarding uh, fe feeding of dairy cattle, hygiene practices uh, before, during, and after milking, for example. Raw milk samples were analyzed in order to um, number 10 culturable microbial groups, uh, standard plate count in order to have an idea of the microbial load of milk samples. Several uh, lactic acid bacteria were also investigated, including Lactococcus, Lactobacillus, and Loconostoc genera. Uh, what I'm going to, co to call cheese ripening bacteria was also uh, counted. In cheese ripening bacteria include actinomycetes like Brevibacterium, Corinebacterium, for example, and also the family Staphylococcus. Yeast, including the yeast like fungus Geotrichum candidum, were also investigated as well as molds gram-negative bacteria, and among gram-negative bacteria, pseudomonas were specifically counted. Regarding practices, uh, 37 variables, uh, uh, including one quantitative variable, were retained for, stati for statistical an analysis, uh, during which uh, the logarithm to base 10 of microbial counts were studied as functions of these 37 variables by losing a linear model. We, we can see from this table that um, farm, uh, 
practices, management practices, surely influence quantitative microbial diversity in raw milk. This is an example of what we can find. Um, you have on the left column the practices identified by, stati by the statistical analysis. And the, the, the way to read this table is the following one. If you take the number of milkings in the bulk tank, some farms had four milkings in the bull tank when the milk was collected, and some other only two milkings. And with four milkings compared to two, we uh, could see um, higher counts of lactococci, lactobacilli, and yeast, for example. What is interesting, in order to rely my talk with the one of Marie-Christine, is that, for example, teat preparation appeared as an important uh, practice related to raw milk microbiology. Uh, in farms, um, pr uh, using pre-dipping of teats compared to no pre-dipping, we observe lower levels of lactococci and yeast which we can consider as useful microorganisms for cheese making. Also, post-dipping, compared to no post-dipping, uh, was associated with lower levels of ripening bacteria and of leuconostox. Something appeared also with the co-breed and configuration of the uh, milk light uh, milking machine with a milk lie uh, dead-handed compared to a looped uh, milk line uh, were associated with higher levels of lactococci, lactobacilli, and leuconox tox, maybe due to biofilms forming um, in an easier way when we have dead-handed milk line. Um, I'm not sure that each specific practice is the reason why we have such differences. Don't forget that we have to consider the global management practices. But this uh, illustrates that practices can influence microbiology. In the second step, we, um, we aimed at um, studying the effect of milking practices, more specifically, on qualitative microbial diversity in raw milk. So we selected 30 dairy farms among the 130 uh, based on different uh, management practices used by the dairy farmers. And in these farms, raw milk samples composed of two milkings were collected. We also uh, analyze the air of the milking per law by um, collecting various uh, volumes of air and impacted, impacting them on uh, culture media. We, uh, we sampled the test surface uh, um, in a similar way that um, the team of Marie-Christine used, uh, but one uh, important difference is, is that we chose to um, sample the tit surface after washing in order to be able to see what can reach the milk during milking. Also, uh, milking machine was investigated by circulating tap water during about five minutes in the system and collecting, collecting one liter of water. Here again, a survey via personal interview of dairy farmers was done uh, on milking practices regarding milking and hygiene procedures, pre and post dipping, removal of full milk, uh, frequency of washing the milking parlor, consumption, maintenance, and washing of the milking machine, for example. Regarding milk and environmental samples, um, uh, we chose to grow only bacterial uh, colonies on a rich medium. 
after growing bacterial colonies, all together were scrapped off and suspended in sterile water. Total bacterial DNA was extracted and then sub submitted to a PCR, PCR, sorry, SSCP analysis. That means that we um, collected uh, a specific part of DNA from all the bacteria uh, present in the sample. And this mix of bacterial DNA was submitted to an analysis, SSCP analysis, in order to uh, have a global picture of microbial diversity in the samples. And we used uh, the bacterial uh, DNA from uh, 50 isolates uh, obtained from raw milk as a reference. For milking practices, uh, 58 variables were retained for statistical analysis. And we tried to rely milking practices and microbial diversity um, through the presence or absence of uh, various peaks indicated by microbial diversity uh, uh, using a prediction system using uh, binary decision trees. This is an example of, of what um, PCR SSCP can give um, during analysis. Here you have the global profile of uh, one raw milk sample in one farm, and each peak corresponds to um, maybe one bacterial species, maybe one bacterial genera, maybe one bacterial group, but each peak corresponds to a microbial group. And the more uh, the peak you have, the more diversity can be recorded. We did the same for the milking machine, teats, and air of the milking parlor. And you can see in this example that we observed that um, common peaks were formed between milk and some of these, what we call environmental samples. And in most cases, the profile obtained uh, for milk was very close to the profile obtained for the milking machine, suggesting that uh, milking machine is a putative source of microbial diversity. We also um, observed that milking, we also confirmed that milking practices influence qualitative microbial diversity in raw milk. Here again, some examples, but but as you can see, again, post-dipping of teats appeared as an important variable. And uh, for example, we observed that uh, when a farm used post-dipping of teats, um, milk tended to be, um, to be uh, in milk, there was uh, no detection of Staphylococcus saprophyticus, Lactococcus lactis of Microbacterium maritipicum, for example, compared to farm in which post-dipping was not uh, practiced. Cleaning of the milking machine appeared also as an important um, practice influencing microbial diversity, uh, inf influencing uh, actinomycetes, staphylococcus, but also gram-negative bacteria. Also, the maintenance of the milking machine appeared to have a, a role uh, in link with the length of tubes and pipelines, for example, or um, uh, with um, the quality of maintenance of the milking machine. And uh, a poor maintenance of the milking machine uh, was associated with uh, more diversity. So I don't tell that we, we must uh, have a bad maintenance, but it's, it underlines a link between practices and microbiology again. 
the, the, the second project uh, aimed at harnessing my aims because it's, it's just starting, yes, three, three slides. Aimed, uh, aimed at uh, harnessing microbial diversity by using it to strengthen cheese flavor and identity. Thank you. Um, particularly when um, cheese makers produce um, traditional cheese with labels like um, PDO, protected designation of origin, uh, there is a sp special concern with autochthonous microorganisms. Cheese producers, in Normandy at least, uh, also uh, claim that there is lack of microbial diversity in commercial cultures. So given this um, consideration, we, uh, we developed um, a project between the University of Caen and the Union of Normandy PDO cheese makers. We, we have uh, at the university a collection of more than uh, 9,000 microbial isolates uh, uh, obtained from various dairy environments in Normandy, in milk, cream, butter, cheese, but also on the teeth surface of cows, uh, uh, in pasture lands, etc. Uh, some of these isolates are, um, for, for some of these isolates, the owner is uh, the University of Caen, but for most of them, it's a co-ownership associating the University and the Union of Normandy Pedio Cheesemaker. Just very quickly, to give you an example of the microbial diversity within this collection, where you have most isolates are probably Lactococcus. Uh, will probably belong to the Lactococcus genus. We also have many Geotrichum candidum, Lactobacillus, and some Actinomycetes, Enterobacteriaceae, yeast, etc. And this is, um, before the conclusion, my uh, last slide. Uh, this project started in July. Yes. And the uh, objective is to create a center for dairy microbes transfer from the university to the cheese producers, uh, offering, uh, offering to cheese product producers, um, whenever they are industrial cheese producers, but also farmers, the same, uh, um, the same microbial resources. And the objectives are a secure preservation of these microbial resources, in-depth characterization of microbial isolates. These two first, this, these two first steps are time-consuming, but not so difficult to do. The, the third step is more difficult. Um, the, the longer, uh, in a longer-term perspective, um, microbial resources should be at the disposal of cheesemakers to strengthen the link of Normandy cheeses with ge their geographical area. This last point uh, raises many questions, at least to me. <laughs> Are we able to define, when I say we, cheese producers and uh, academic people, are we able to define what uh, what special flavor traits can be associated with uh, what special bacterial groups? I don't know. So, in, to conclude, um, I believe that it is possible to support dairy farmers in order to shape and sustain microbial diversity in situ in raw milk. Uh, the second point is that microbial diversity of raw milk may be harnessed directly or indirectly to make cheeses that represent their own geographical area. And then a question, an open question, I would be pleased to share with you to uh, exchange views during these few days. How can science help the cheese makers defining what is an appropriate diversity? Thank you for your attention. I would like to thank my, my colleagues um, and also Marie-Christine Montel and
and Céline Delbes for, the, for their help in uh, SSCP analysis. Thank you very much.